So here's the situation. Audrey's three different kinds of flowers. An orange flower, a white flower, and a purple flower. She also has two different kinds of aces. Audrey wants to know how many different ways she can put all three flowers into the two vases so that each vase has at least one flower. All right, let's answer this question. So let's just check, uh, do all the possible scenarios and see how many we can get. All right, so let's just put these two in this face and this one in this face. That's scenario number one. All right, now we can put these two in this face and this one in this face. Scenario number two. And then we can put these two in this face and this one in this face. Scenario number three. Oh wait, did we already do this scenario? Uh-oh, I don't remember. Let's just try this again. All right, so let's just put this one in this face and these two in this face. Scenario number one. Now let's put these two in this face and this one in this way, face. Scenario number two. And we can put these two in this face and this one in this face. Scenario number three. And then we can put this one in this face and this one in this face. Oh wait. We already did that, didn't we? Uh-oh. I guess this isn't the best strategy, so it looks like what we need to do is to get organized. Now let's get organized. I'm not a very good drawer, so I labeled all the objects by number. This is vase 1, this is vase 2, the orange flower is F1, the white flower is F2, and the purple flower is F3. So we're going to be using this list to keep track of all the different ways we can put all three flowers into the two vases so that each vase has at least one flower. In this column, we will keep track of what will be in vase one, vase one, and in this column, we'll keep track of what will be in vase two. Now the question says, each vase has to have at least one flower. So let's just start off with putting seeing all the scenarios that there are when we put one flower in vase one. So let's just start off with a simple choice. F1, we can put F1 in vase one, which means F2 and F3 must be in vase two. So we put that on the board. F1 under vase one, and then under vase two is F2 and F3. Now we'll go with F2 being the one flower in vase 1, which means F1 and F3 are in vase 2. F2 in vase 1, F1 and F3 in vase 2. Now the last one for va one flower in vase 1 would have to be F3, so we're going to put F3 in vase 1, and the two remaining flowers, F1 and F2, we will put in vase number 2. F3, F1, and F2. Now that's all the possibilities we have for when there's one flower in vase 1. So now let's try two flowers in vase 1. So we can start off with F1 and F2, F1 and F2 in vase 1, and F3 in vase 2. So we'll put that here too. F1 and F2 in vase 1, and F3 in vase 2. And then there is F1 and F3 in vase 1, and F2 in vase 2. And F2. So the last one there can be is F2 and F3 in vase 1, which means F1 is in vase 2. So F2 and F3 in vase 1 and F1 in vase 2. All right, now we'll put three flowers in vase 1. So we'll put F1, F2, and F3 in vase 1. But look, there's zero flowers in vase 2. And the question says each vase has to have at least one flower. So this, this wouldn't work, which means we only can have one or two flowers in vase 1. Now we have covered all the scenarios when we are done. Since we did it in a very organized and orderly way, we know that we didn't double count anything or skip any scenarios. So now we know that there's only one, two, three, four, five, six different ways that all three flowers can go into the two vases 
so that each vase has at least one flower. Let's recap. For a question asking for possibilities or combinations, it's always best to make an organized list. So first, label the objects. Second, make the list. Third, group the scenarios. And fourth, in each group, make an ordered list.